Well, good afternoon. Uh, while uh, we're waiting for my parts for my E forty four hundred six A to arrive, uh, I thought we'd take a look at the last piece of the auction score, uh, and this is something that I've been uh, was really after because this is a classic piece of gear. Uh, if you're familiar with a, uh, a vector network analyzer, well. The Vector Network Analyzer is the modern descendant of this piece of gear here. This is an 8405A Vector Voltmeter. And it started that whole Network Analyzer tree of tooling, of test equipment. Um, it was the first item that uh, existed that enabled you to measure a uh, signal and compare the not only the uh, amplitude of the signal, but also the phase of the signal across two points. So what you would use is you would use these two probes which are attached uh, here and quite uh, strangely they're attached uh, permanently and I would assume that's because they needed to ensure that uh, the length of these cables was carefully known and carefully calibrated so that when they were measuring the phase or displaying the phase between the test points there was no additional electrical delay that would be in the system by you know, cables being longer or shorter. Uh, Anyway, you could take those two probes and you could insert them in different parts of your system and measure the voltage in each of those parts. And you could see here that you can select channel A and channel B, and then you can measure the various different uh, voltage ranges, uh, whether you're uh, down at 0.1 millivolt or all the way up to 1,000 uh, millivolts, and get a uh, value of the RMS voltage for the RF signal. Uh, this goes up to about 1 gigahertz in terms of uh, uh, bandwidth. You could then go in and actually get the phase angle, which is the difference between the signals, between signal A and signal B. And you can very, very uh, uh, you know, fine granularity drill this in to get very accurate phase uh, readings. And that would enable you to see how the signal has propagated the delay and any conversions that have occurred on the signal as it's gone through the, the system. So I wanted to get this, because uh, not because I really have a, a need for it, I have a, uh, a vector network analyzer, but this is such an incredible uh, old piece of, of gear that uh, I, I just you know, wanted to own it. And uh, uh, I was able to get this for, I think, uh, $45 was uh, the bid that I got on it. So I was very, very happy about uh, picking this up. Anyway. Let's go and uh, turn this th uh, this guy on and uh, see if it uh, powers up. Okay, we have uh, we have it all connected. Uh, it's uh, summer here, or it's getting very close to the end of summer. So this is uh, a Red Hook uh, drink of choice today. is a Red Hook uh, Long Hammer uh, IPA, uh, and the cooler is actually from uh, one of my old rugby clubs, St Ives Rugby, uh, home of the Saints. Uh, play up at Hassel Park in Sydney, the home of rugby. Anyway, we're plugged in, so let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay. Well, it seems to not have burst into flames, and we've got a little bit of um, uh, signal, or at least a bit of the meters uh, jumping around. Uh, let's see... Um, Let's turn it on. Let's see if, what happens if now when you press. Hmm. So we might be might have a little bit of a problem here on this guy. Anyway, uh, to use this gear successfully, you need to uh, uh, have some uh, components that uh, enable you to use these guys here. So the next thing I wanted to look at was uh, this guy which I have which is the 11570A uh, accessory kit and you can see it's actually from uh, Raytheon um, that goes with uh, this 8405 vector voltmeter okay so here we have the, uh, the accessory kit let's just open it up they put in a little bit of padding to keep things from bouncing around. Ooh. You can see that uh, there are these little, let's see, I don't know if you'll notice that, there are these little uh, pins, and these little pins are the pins that are at the top of the test probes. So there's a little bag uh, of those 
that that guy looks like it's fallen out of. Um, let's have a look. Let's go through what we have here. Uh, what we have here are these little T's. Now these are um, uh, 11, 5, 36, A, 50 ohm T's. But basically, uh, what this enables you to do is to connect this in line with your signal, and then you can take the probe, and we can drop the probe directly into uh, the item, uh, into the the T here. And now we're actually going to be reading uh, the signal from that uh, that T. Now, I'm not sure if we have the focal distance to actually zoom in here, but if we zoom in, let me see if I can get it to bear. Let me see if I can get some light in here for you. Right in there, you should see you'll see that the um, uh, that's the little the center line that the probe is going to go and uh, connect into. And we're going to try and keep everything at that uh, 50 ohm impedance. So that's uh, those guys. Now the kit comes with two of those. Now what you need to be able to, to do, oh, let me zoom back out, is generally you're going to need to, oh, I forgot to turn off my other camera. Uh, generally what you're going to go do is uh, set up a system where you'll have uh, a test signal coming in and then it will head out here and go to uh, one of these probe T's and then from here it'll go through the actual device under test and then eventually you know at some point in the, the system you'll run into the second T. Now to ensure everything is uh, done correctly you need to be able to accurately split the power and so that's what this guy here is for the 11 uh, 549A power divider and uh, this guy, if you put, uh, you'll put your primary signal in here and you'll get two signals out on the side. And I think, um, I think this is like a 6 dB, I'd have to go check. I think this is like a 6 dB uh, step down in the power. So you could imagine that uh, what you would do is have power coming into here. And then you would have these guys connected on the side here. And then you would have your probe going into here. And you would now have your measurement system. You'd put your device under test over here. Now, to make sure that everything works uh, fine, the last thing you need to do is to ensure that everything is terminated correctly. So you would use these uh, HP uh, 908A loads. Now, these are loads that are good from DC to uh, 4 gigahertz. And you know you would put one of these on the the end, and that would make sure that you know this was not getting any um, standing wave bounce back uh, from the end. It's all you know in a perfectly balanced system. You know this should be absorbing everything from uh, your item. Then you'd put your device on a test in here, and at the other end somewhere you would have this, and then you could use this to uh, to go and turn it off. The final thing you need to be able to uh, check the change in phase is a, a nice, accurate, uh, good short. And that's what this guy is here. And so this would enable you to put this short onto uh, one of your ports and then get a guaranteed 100% reflection from that, uh, that port. Uh, if you have a look at the, uh, the video I did on the 415E uh, and using uh, coming up with standing wave ratio, uh, oops you would see uh, that that uh, you'd see how those those are used uh, anyway uh, as I you know very bad I feel like you know at this uh, you really should turn the, the nut here and not uh, let that turn because uh, if you look at the construction of these uh, things in there you'll see that they have a little hole and they're often like four little uh, claws and they grab the, the little pin that will be in here and so if you turn these you actually will get those claws will dig into or spoil uh, the pins and so that can be bad for repeatability and accuracy and so on. Um, now the last thing you need to be able to do is to deal with the various different um, uh, deal with the various different uh, voltages you're going to get and so HP has these little tips that they made, the 
uh, 6A, which are a 10 to 1 divider. So basically, they'll have a resistor in here with a, expecting the known value of the resistance in here, and together they will actually divide the signal uh, by 10. And so in here, you're actually supposed to get two of these plus two isolators, they call them. Uh, and so what I have is I have what looks like three of them, uh, or actually four of these tips, but I won't really know until we play around with them because uh, I don't know what uh, the isolator tip looks like. Now the whole idea of the isolator uh, tip, these and these came in a 10 to 1 and 100 to 1 uh, uh, divider ratios. Uh, I think they're common with some of the older uh, probes and that that you had um, with scopes where they had the HP had active probes and things like that. But anyway, um, uh, you had these dividers, and then you also had uh, you also had these uh, isolators. And the isolators were designed to raise the impedance of the meter up so that uh, it would not load the the target circuit down. So that's the the kit here. Uh, what I want to do is to uh, get set up and uh, uh, see if we can take a take a measurement of something, you know, of anything really. All right, let me uh, be right back. Okay. So now I have a 200 megahertz uh, zero dBm signal. Uh, coming out and coming into this power split here and then heading off into the two items. So let's turn my system on and we're going to take uh, probe A and we'll drop uh, probe A into its socket there. All right, let's move that out of the road. So it's at 200 megahertz. So there we go. Now we have the frequency range set at 200 megahertz. We're seeing the APC is locked. And so now uh, we're seeing a bit. Okay. So I'm seeing minus. It says I'm see oh yes because I have a ten to one uh, divider on the, the the thing so hang on let me take that out let me take the ten to one uh, divider off let's just see if we can drop this guy back in yes let's okay so there we go so we're sitting at minus six and a half which is sort of Okay, it's, you know, this, I have some variability there. So now, let me do the same thing with the other uh, item here. And let's go have a look at channel B. Okay, well, I'm getting zero... Uh, value on channel B. So that's going to make it very hard for me to check uh, the phase. So let's just swap that around. Ah, well that makes Okay, so. All right, so what I'm seeing is, you know, about what I'd expect there, about what I expect there. Okay, let's now go over to channel B and see if I, there we go. So let's move that. And so you're seeing Oh, I think that uh, that switch there is a little dicky. You know, and so now we're seeing the the right value 
there. So because these are both going to be the same, uh, we should see roughly the same uh, value there. So now what I can do is let's take that out let me jump across in here let me grab a, a little 10 dB attenuator okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy off drop the attenuator in the line put this guy back on, there we go, we're all tight and now put this guy back in here and now you'll see that we're way down here and if we step back down we're seeing what we expect. So the voltage side of this thing is is working uh, fairly well. Let me see if I can get uh, this prop. There's going to be no phase difference uh, between the two because there's nothing going on. So let's take Ooh, and there you notice that we've jumped uh, right up now because of the standing wave that's being uh, brought in. Yeah, I think, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can get the, the camera in here. You might be able to just see this. You can see the glass is pushing down. It's pushing on the meter there. So that's not going to, to read. So let's uh, pop the top and uh, take a look at it. So here we go. We have the, the top off the unit. And uh, these things are just, just pretty. Just look at that. You know, it's uh, it's just excellent. The the look and feel, the design. It's so clean. You know, you can see the. If we get in the front there, you know, you can see the switches that uh, they're in there. I'm gonna have to uh, probably see if I can take that. Uh, cover off to get to the the meter to poke it out but uh, you know you can see the signal comes let me get my little pointy stick right, there I go get my little pointy stick now feel better um, these things are quite ingenious with how they work so let me move the little accessories box uh, out of the way here so we can come over here and get in the picture so basically these items here let's see if we can get some light in there for you um, the signals are going to come in here now if you try to go and measure uh, you know these things at uh, the frequencies and do all the, the work on it you know you'd have to have a very uh, expensive piece of kit and it would have to be designed all properly and it'd be a hard task so what they do instead is they actually use that APC uh, to go in and create what is effectively uh, an intermediate frequency that's a 20 kilohertz wave that is the uh, uh, that has the same amplitude and phase as uh, uh, the item that's coming in so whether you're on the A or the B channel uh, you'll come in. So basically, these things are fundamentally just an RF voltmeter, uh, a phase meter. At the IF stage, the uh, a voltmeter and a phase meter, uh, and that gives you everything you need. But basically, we come in here and we're mixed with this 20 uh, kilohertz um, signal generator, and so you can can't really. Uh, 
I'd have to look up and see where it is. I can't see a little uh, tag that says 20 kilohertz. But, you know, basically you'll come in to here and then you'll be mixed down uh, to this uh, uh, 20 kilohertz signal. Now, how they do that is quite ingenious. Um, they do it by sampling the uh, signal. So they sample a repetitive signal at a slower rate and that enables them to rebuild the you know sample at a slower rate and that enables them to to rebuild the signal over a longer period of time at a much lower frequency so they're now later on in the system after they get through the samplers they're really only dealing with this 20 kilohertz uh, wave and they, so they have a 20 kilohertz wave which is uh, the same amplitude and phase as the A channel and as the B channel. Then they measure that to get your amplitude. And that's what you see on here. Then they basically uh, clip it to get rid of the uh, amplitude information. And now they can take that. So that now we have same signals, but with very clear phase difference. And you can take that into the phase meter. And then from that, you can actually get your uh, phase meter out here. So it's really rather smart the way they've uh, they've done that. Now, if you're, let me unplug this so that I don't electrocute myself. If you've noticed, you might notice that there's a, a slot missing. No, this is not a board missing in the, well, there's a board missing, but it's not a board missing in the device per se. What it is, is they had this little slot and you would plug the extender card because when you were working on say one of these guys over here oh I don't really let me try one of these guys I want to be careful because I don't want to uh, break the little plastics given how old they are right if you see that how the uh, system lays out they have the motherboard at the bottom and they have all of these cards. So what you would have is that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. Hmm. I may actually have a 15 board, a 15 pin extender here. Uh, but then you would plug that, take this board out of here, you would plug it into here and then you could plug this card effectively into the top of that board and then you could now reach all the components and be able to make your adjustments and things like that. So it's very nicely made. You know, it really is a fantastic piece of engineering. Let me just get these things back in here. You know, now they have the standard, these are old uh, electrolytic capacitors, power supply. Uh, out the back here, you'll have um, the recorders and so on, which is, you know, uh, if you watch the uh, HP auction score part two, where I showed the plotters, you know, you would take these out to chart recorders and strip recorders and so on. And that would give you a way of uh, being able to um, uh, go and, uh, 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 you know, record the system over a period of time. All right, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, let me see if I can get this uh, back off here and fix that uh, uh, that meter. All right, be right back. Okay, well, just pulling that whole assembly off, got the the meter out. Let's see if I can can I get in there and pop that back in any way. No, I don't think I can. I think, unfortunately, these meters are sort of sealed to keep the dust out. Yeah. Well, let's see if I can take this back panel off. And then we might be able to just carefully unscrew the, the 
meter without unsoldering it from uh, morning. I uh, had to stop uh, uh, work on this so I've come back uh, the next morning. Drink of choice is uh, coffee. Uh, anyway, I finally uh, did what I should have done uh, way at the start, which is I took the uh, unit out of, uh, uh, I took the meter off the cables here so that I could actually get to it and then I cleaned up the, uh, the display the glass and then re you know super glued it into place utilizing the you know the leftover contact cement that it still had there uh, and as you can see you're know, moving it wobbling it around uh, the meter is moving uh, nice and uh, freely now uh, so what I'm going to go do is I'm going to solder it back onto the wires here and uh, we'll uh, uh, see how we go with terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the actual uh, meter we'll put it all back together and then we'll see if we can get some phase uh, angle all right be right back okay so we have the uh, unit wired in again and so now i need to just put on the, uh, the little metal cover so do that i'm going to slide these little spaces back on again probably have my head in the, the shot as I'm trying to get in there and see it okay and then now this piece just plugs onto the back there so let's see how we go about doing that Take this guy here, go okay, there, nice. Okay, we have it in again. Um, I suspect the unit might have been dropped at some point because it was a little, it was a little hard to get uh, the display, the meter in right at the front. Because it seems that there's a there's it's a little bit out of kilter, so I don't know if it's been the unit's been dropped or if it's just been stacked incorrectly over time or whatever. But um, it took a little bit of fiddling to get that in so that the bezel at the front, so the bezel at the front sat flush with the uh, metal uh, casing around it. So. Anyway, let's uh, just screw this in, push the clip back, and let me uh, <coughs> swing this around so that I can uh, get in and just uh, cinch those, uh, those nuts tight. There we go. Okay. So now, oh, we have that meter in. So let's slide the top back on the unit and see how see how it goes. Okay, so we can see the meter is back together. Um, if we zoom in a bit, let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit. You can see the this part. Here was where I had that problem getting that face to sit in and align. So I think the unit is a little bit out of square somewhere. Uh, anyway, let's come back. Alright, so now that we've got it back in, we need to uh, adjust the meter to, to register zero. So let's come in and do that. Uh, can't quite get to zero there. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's actually, but anyway, you can see the, uh, you know, you can see that it uh, is working. So let's just push it this way. Now the first thing I have is my, uh, I have my 8657B hooked up, 200 megahertz coming out here. As you can see over here, we have this set for 200 megahertz. 
So let's turn, let's set this back here, it's 0 dB. Let's turn this on. And let's make sure that all of our connections are nice and tight. Oh, well, it's part of your problem. Let me put my uh, 50 ohm load. What did I do with the. Okay. Let's put the 50 ohm load on there. I still had the short connected. Okay, so now we can see that we're reading six and a half, which is about what I expect. So let's go to B. And there you go, we're reading six and a half there as well. Still need to clean this pot out. Um, while I had it off, I only looked at uh, this guy here. I didn't bother taking off the little metal can that covered this to get some uh, contact cleaner in there. We'll do that later because uh, what you'll notice over here is that uh, that needle is sort of slightly bent and so what happens is on this end of the uh, range it's got it's digging into the paper a little bit and stopping so I'll have to open it back up and readjust anyway now that we've got this uh, set correctly we need to come over here and take a phase measurement and we need to do this by firstly hitting phase finder all right so that's oh, let me just get that let's put that back a little bit so that it's out of so here we can see that um, it's uh, negative, so we want to make sure that this little meter offset is over here on the negative, and we want to zero uh, the meter in there. And just want to breathe on this control a little bit. Yeah, for the purpose of this, that's, uh, that's going to be good enough. Let me get some light in there so you can see what's going on. You know, so now the meter is zeroed. So we go back here to the 180 range. Yeah. That's a little off zero. So there's going to be some adjustment that needs to be done. Anyway, we're good there. Now what I need to do is to come back here and insert the device under test, which is going to be this guy here. So let's undo this. here again at that we're set there and if we go here we should drop down but if I take 10 out we're good now that we've done that we can come back to the phase angle here and come in and still negative so now we can sort of step down a bit and keep coming down and then we want to Okay, so there we are, we're on its smallest thing. So with that 10 dB attenuator in there, because we're at 6, 10 here, and we're at minus 2.8, that's just for argument's sake, 2.6, sorry, let's just make it a simple thing. We're 2.6 negative, we set a 10 here, so it's 10 minus 2.6, so that's 7.4 degrees. Uh, lagging compared to you know what the signal is over here so this delay at 200 megahertz is introducing you know this attenuator sorry 200 megahertz introducing 7.6 uh, uh, degrees of uh, phase delay and we can see it's 10 dB of attenuation if we look over here so that uh, looks like you know and then to work it out what I'd need to do is to go and uh, there's a formula you have where you can get the relative permittivity of the the unit here and then you can calculate what the angle should be 
Uh, and ideally what you'd want to do is use uh, uh, an airline that's a precision item that you know uh, what the permittivity of air is because it's one, you know, you can get that and then you can work out, okay, the specific uh, um, phase delay on that should be X degrees. You can then have a look at this and make sure that this thing is calibrated. I need to go get that um, airline before I can actually do the, the calibration here. But what we've seen here is basically the uh, operation of the unit. So at this stage, I think it's a bit of a winner because um, it's now going to allow me to, to do some of the, the calibration work on it. It's working. So need to get in and give some good contact cleaning here and then fix the, the error on the bend on that. Uh, and then we can take a look at uh, acquiring an airline and maybe test it out. Anyway, I hope you uh, found this interesting. Uh, if you like uh, uh, the video, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you think it's worth it, give it a thumbs up. You know, uh, everyone seems to be doing that now at the end of their videos. Anyway, um, you know, we'll come back and uh, hopefully in the next video I'll have the bits and pieces to repair my E4406A and we can see the finish of that. Anyway, catch you again later. Bye.